Welcome back students, Mr. Al again with part 5 of your spaceship tutorials. We've been flying through things quick here, we're going to keep on going, adding in some more functionality. Hopefully at this point we're familiar enough with the basics of Greenfoot that adding on step-by-step -step new ideas isn't too overwhelming, but I'm recording these videos for the specific purpose of you being able to go back over them as many times as you need to if you're getting stuck at different steps along the way. And make sure you do understand them because we're going to continue building on top of these. It's very important that we don't fall too far behind. Here's where we're at. So far, we've made a object, an actor. This is a spaceship that follows the mouse, also behaves or obeys keyboard inputs. It's able to shoot various types of projectiles that have behavior that is created in a modular way, that have unique speeds and some unique attributes for each one of them. Also, maybe you went ahead and did this kind of rotation of the fireballs. I included it in some of your notes. Maybe you had a chance to experiment with that. Pretty cool functionality. And we wanted to make sure that we also, in our code, I'll just pop this all open here, that we used our hierarchies, used our inheritance of our projectile types to be able to not have to copy and paste too much code. And also that in our hero class, we also have modularity for the processing of shots and shooting. This is gonna come in handy in our next step as we add in the ability to customize the speed at which things are being fired. And sorry if you hear my baby making noise in the background. Enjoy the cute sounds as a little bonus for this lesson. So we want to be able to make it so that these missiles, this is clearly absurd to be shooting these missiles this fast. That's not, there's no reasonable game that's going to have this. Maybe it's like a superpower that it can do this. But for now, we want to make this a bit more reasonable and add in some constraints to how fast this can fire. For now, I'm going to show you how to add in constraints for all of our objects at the same time, and I'll let you play around with customizing it for individual things. Maybe you want the laser to be able to shoot really fast, the missile to shoot super slow, and the fireball to shoot somewhere in between. That's up for you to decide on your own. Here's what we're going to be doing. We are going to be using something called a Boolean trigger. A Boolean is a new data type, and it's a true or false. It has two states, either true or false private boolean named after some guy named bool maybe you've heard about this in other places it's a very important piece of what we call primitive data in programming in java as well i'm going to call this trigger released and this boolean means that trigger released will either be true or false it's the only two options for it when my hero is created i want to set my trigger released it's not a typo here, to true. I'm going to say that the trigger, yes, the trigger, it's true. It is released. Okay, it's not activated right now. And later on, we're going to be setting something to false for things to be able to switch back and forth between two different states. Here's where I want this to happen. When I am pressing my keys for my shooting process shot, if I am shooting, I want it to pause to not let another shot go off until I've let go and press the key again. Here's what I'm going to say. Else. Trigger released equals true. What I've done here, as I said, if I'm pressing down a key, shoot some weapon. Depending on the key, shoot a weapon. If I'm not shooting a weapon, set the trigger release to be true. You might be wondering, wait, we already set it to true up here. Correct. Right here in our code, we haven't yet set the other condition yet. This is kind of like the final step where we're setting it back to being allowed to happen. We're really going to see this take place over in our next piece of information here, in our shoot <coughs> method <coughs> that's being accessed here. And here's what we're going to be doing. We already have some code here we're going to be surrounding it in a conditional. So I'm going to actually be indenting this here. And in front of it, I'm creating an if statement. Here's what I'm going to say. If trigger released. What this is saying is by not putting anything beside it here, I'm saying if the trigger is released, if trigger released equals true, I could write this like this. If this boolean equals true, this is totally fine way to write it. But this also means the same thing by saying if trigger released is true. If I wanted to say not true, I would say not trigger released. But in this case, 
I want to say if trigger released is true. So if we are not currently or we haven't recently tried to shoot, I want to make sure I wrap this conditional in its proper brackets for the code contained within it. So if my trigger has recently been released, I let go of a key, then it's going to allow the firing to happen, the shooting to occur. But here is where our next piece of logic tightens this all up into one package. Once a shot has been fired, I'm setting my trigger release to false. This means as soon as I shoot, change this to false, meaning this cannot happen again because this only runs if trigger released is true. Now it's false. This cannot happen again until it becomes true again. How does it become true? When this is run, meaning I've let go of any of these keys. What this allows is what we call like a semi-automatic way of firing, where if I hold down spacebar, I shoot a single laser. Now if I let go and shoot again, I shoot another one. I can shoot them as fast as I want. Hear me button mashing in the background. I can shoot them nice and fast. Every time I press and let go of the space bar, you can mash it, but I can't just hold it down and have it shoot eternally. Same thing goes for the fireball. Same thing goes for the missile. I can mash it, but I can't hold it down any longer. That's actually probably a much more intelligent way of having these weapons to work. However, maybe you're happy with this being fully semi-automatic and you're good with that, but we want to make our programs even more customized than this. So beyond actually just having it be able to be semi-automatic, we can also have it do a slower rapid fire, meaning that it automatically shoots at a different rate than once every tick. We can delay it as much as we want it to. I'm actually not going to show you that code in this project right here, but I will provide you some examples of how to do that in your notes attached to this lesson. So please take a read over those, try to implement it yourself and ask if you have any questions. And once you're done it, keep on playing around with your different projectiles and see if you can't add custom functionality to each individual projectile. For example, maybe make it so that your laser is one big stream like before, where you hold down spacebar and it just shoots with a stream of lasers, because maybe that makes sense for a laser. Maybe make it so that your fireballs are semi-automatic. As long as you mash, you can make as many as you want at the speed of your mashing. But maybe make your missiles only be able to be fired once every five seconds. That would be a good goal to try and aim for, to really see if you're understanding what's going on with this customization of functionality using if statements, conditionals, and the Boolean triggers that limit their functionality. Good luck with it. Let me know if you need a hand.